All right, we're live for Fireside Chat number 98. So, uh, stuff we've got going on this week. Um, just about hitting the end of March here, so should be seeing uh, reports, reviews, everything like that come in. Uh, one announcement I made in the all thing is that I need um, all uh, war bands to have in the, uh, a couple things done. Uh, the first one is to um, have in their review channel uh, their own pinned list of duties and who's doing which um you probably have one there already that's a post by me that may or may not be up to date the idea is that you'll make your own so that you can go and edit at any time instead of me having to edit mine for every single warband and have to you have to wait on me to go figure out who's doing what and everything like that you can just update it whenever needed and um instead what i'll do is i'll just check that periodically and update my master thread with um the information from those pinned posts so you'll need to keep those updated as well but um need every warband to do that um i haven't gotten a chance to actually individually double check that every warband has so uh if you have or everybody has that's great um other than that uh, another one was uh goals pinned i think every warband has this but um again i haven't double checked that yet i'll do that before the end of the month for sure um probably today um Every warband needs goals pinned in their warband's channel, as well as their uh, warband uh, codex subforum on the forums. Um, in addition, if you want to pin the goals in your review channel, even in your review channel instead of your warband channel, I'm fine with that. If you maybe your goals make more sense from like a leadership perspective to have in that you know administrative channel rather than the public channel. Um, that's fine, um, up to you on that one, as long as they are there, um, which is essentially to ensure that you have them. Uh, that, and the third thing was, I'm kind of evaluating the usefulness of Vathrudner's, uh, Acolytes. I do, uh, I've gotten some good feedback on it so far. Um, it's definitely not like a, you know, one thing or the other. I think, um, there's definitely some benefits to having something of a filter or screening process on new and returning recruits, and it makes it really easy because, let's say we have a new recruit come back, or a new recruit join, rather, or a returning member come back, and uh, I or, uh, you know, maybe Solite or a different officer in the channel explains some of the basics of WA, maybe some of the things that have changed recently. We have that whole, or that whole conversation, and then... Another person joins, and they can simply go into the channel, and they'll actually be able to go back and read through that. Or, um, you know, even if they don't, we can reference it when we bring up that conversation again with the new people. So um, I think it definitely does provide a really nice way to keep reintroducing people to WA or, or introducing them for the first time. And uh, I think that's a really nice benefit. Um in addition, I think that it does do a good job of, as far as placing people in the right warband uh, where possible, just because certainly we as the leadership of the warband have all of the information at hand. And um, I especially, I like having those uh, warband uh, ad advertisements, um, so I can always reference that channel. I link that a lot to anybody that we're looking to place into a warband so they can kind of explore there and get a rough idea of each warband. And um, I know when we were making them, some people were wondering, well, what exactly do I put on this? I mean, that's that's really the goal is just to flesh out your warband a little bit with a kind of a brief introduction overview. I mean, anything you want, really. I mean, I know for some people, maybe they're not sure exactly what does separate their warband, but just anything you could put on there. I mean, even if it's just something like, well, this, this makes my warband seem cool, um, that's fine. I mean, that's basically the goal is um, to be something we can show new members. So that said, um, let's see. Got anything else here? Um, something that was brought up, which would probably be um, if we did get rid of after near acolytes somewhere down the road. Um, I think it would certainly be beneficial to have some kind of a channel for people who aren't in a warband, whether that be new or returning members, maybe a warband gets closed, so we kind of have some people kind of floating around. It's nice to have that gathering area where we can sort of get everything figured out, figure out where who should go where, and have that, um, yeah, that kind of 
free floating uh, area. So even if the war band disappeared, I think we'd still have a channel for that purpose, and it would offer the nice benefit of you can have people who aren't in a war band. It's certainly possible, and then they have a place to hang out for a little while while we get everything uh, sorted for them. So I think it's another benefit. Um, on the other hand, it certainly I think there's some downsides to people not being able to join the warband of the recruiter right away. Um, I think it actually draws back into a little bit the uh, one of the uh, debates that we used to have, which was um, uh, when we were getting game, we have game channels and warband channels, and if if you have the warband role, you have access to that game channel um, if it's one that's like associated with the warband. Um, and if you have the game role, even if you aren't in the warband, you can see that warband channel. So that's kind of the idea with that. And uh, basically, um, the problem is, let's say you have a uh, new recruit. Okay, well, they're going to join Bath Thrudeniers, but they get the associated game roles. Let's say they play League of Legends. They're going to get the League role and be access to the League channel. But what if they were recruited into, let's say, Hell's Raiders or something like that? Um, they wouldn't have access to that channel right away. And we've had one or two exceptions where somebody was given uh, kind of temporary access to a warband channel. Um, but most of the time they wouldn't. So it, then it's kind of like, well, that's okay because they can just interact in the game channel. But at the same time, we've been really pushing interaction in warband channels. Um, so it sort of creates this issue of, well... If we're pushing interaction in warband channels, how come when we bring in new recruits, they don't even have access to that channel until they transfer into the warband? Um, which is a bit weird, but at the same time, I mean, uh, it's already written in the activity rules that a brand new recruit is not going to uh, count against your activity. And of course, if they're not in your warband, they're certainly not going to count, count against your activity. So um, I think those problems are addressed to some degree, but there's definitely that kind of disconnect of, oh, here's my brand new recruit, but they don't get access to kind of our channel that they would probably go in. But um, at the same time, I think uh, there might be some further benefits depending on how the person is brought in. Like, let's say you just bring in a friend and you don't even necessarily play most of the same games, but you have a, just, you know, just want to hang out. Then I think there's some... Uh, positives to having a warband that is uh, essentially exists to uh, figure out which warband people would go in if uh, there isn't one that's already kind of predetermined, as has been the case for most of the people that joined Bath Third Years. So anyways, to, to summarize, I'm looking at kind of pros and cons and evaluating that right now. So I'm interested in hearing uh, further people's thoughts on that. And um, as well, uh, spread the word to any officers you see, especially uh, your own officers in your oran that uh yeah those are the three things i'm looking for goals pinned on the forums and in discord uh their own post listing who's doing which duties uh pinned in their review channel on discord and uh yeah thoughts on Beth through nears basically so those are the three things i'm looking for right now um still working on the yule song as well um as far as progress basically done with drums bass is done guitars making a lot of progress um so not actually that much further until i'm done with every part except for vocals so that's what we'll be doing last is writing lyrics of course um incorporating the uh, top 10 uh, point scores from the uh vet vigor the yule uh, competition so uh, yeah, actually not, uh, not that much more progress to be made. I mean, there's, there's always going to be like some degree of, uh, uncertainty as far as the timeline on it. Um, I want to kind of mix and master it and whatnot too. So, um, there's definitely more stuff to be done, but, uh, so far making a ton of progress and yeah, continue to work on it basically. Um, I have been kind of drawing up some stuff. Um, as well still um, to some degree on the uh, idea of using uh, houses uh, as a system of organization uh, for the chain of command so as the sole system of organization within the clan um, so I was kind of drawing up some ideas um, I've had a lot of interesting ideas um, that I'm not sure are all compatible um, 
those ideas, some of them being stuff I thought up, some of them being stuff people have just uh, mentioned to me or kind of pitched to me. So I think there's there's a lot of different directions we could go in. Um, something I've kind of talked about before, just to give a little bit of insight into it, is the idea of kind of reverting to a fleet system. Um, but the so far, the problem I've encountered in me just kind of brainstorming sketching out some of these ideas is that there is um, well, some difficulty in combining a fleet system uh, like the terminology with uh, houses um, because generally if we're using a rank structure so the, the rank that I like is Lord Captain um, you know when we had our third the third fleet system we uh, utilized Captain as the command rank for a division but, uh, so, so with that in mind, assuming Lord Captain, you're the leader of a house, that equates a house to a division. Um, and therefore, within a house would be platoons, uh, therefore families. So the leader of a family should be some type of lieutenant. So to that point, it's fine, but then it becomes sort of weird because um, if you're looking for, let's say, equating a house to like a, a group of ships or something like that, like some kind of naval unit, um it doesn't make that much sense um it's certainly doable but let me reopen my document here but it does get uh, one thing i was thinking about doing is like numbering like here i had written out like you know the person's name lord captain of the first division of house stippity for example um, assuming we use, you know, divisions and, um, like according to what I've researched so far, like the proper terminology would be divisions and squadrons rather than the divisions and platoons. Um, I mean, you can kind of just use whatever you want, really. It's not like we have to stick to the, uh, real life terminology, but that's one thing that we could do all alternatively, um, is equating families to squadrons, um, or simply leave them as houses and families, drop the whole naval terminology, and just leave that to the ranking system. Um, one other, uh, which, which is probably the most likely thing, I know that was something I was kind of toying the, with the idea of using terminology like division, but um, we'll see exactly. I mean, um, there's certainly ways to combine the two concepts as well. Uh, that said, I think um, most likely we'll have to just use the terms houses and families. We have the term Lord Captain for a house then, so perhaps the leader of a family would just be a lieutenant. Um, most likely. Um, I think uh, the logical question is going to be, well, let's say I want to establish a WA presence on a new game. I start recruiting a bunch. How does that work? The idea is you would be looking towards establishing your own family in this, but there is another sort of a path we can take, which is um, knights, basically knight order. And um, this is something that's been brought up. It's the idea of transforming some or all war bands, uh, as they are right now, into knight orders down the road if we implemented this system. Um, so that idea would be that knight orders, um, you have, have a flexible definition there where you might have a knight order for each house, which is responsible for some duties, chain of command stuff, even something like that, at least maintenance of the house. Uh, for example, maintaining rosters, documentation, all that kind of stuff. Um, or alternatively, um, you might have night orders that are like the warband ones, uh, houseless that aren't, uh, they don't have a specific um, house they're associated with or that you have to be in to join, but they would have to have some kind of specific purpose most likely. Um, whether that could be, maybe we would say, okay, you just have to have a specific game. Um, it's hard to say, but I think um, I do like the idea of that thematically, of kind of a group of knights going off to like a specific game to establish an outpost or something like that. I think it'd be cool. Um, I think there's some possibility of combining the term knight into rank names or the chain of command, which could be interesting. Um as in knight lieutenant or something like that. If you're the leader of a family and you are a knight, maybe that's the term that's used. Or we could just, you know, completely separate the two. I know one thing that was discussed was, do you have to be a knight in order to be, say, an earl or a lord? Um, which, 
is kind of a difficult question. I mean, my first instinct is to say no, because I think generally it is a good rule of thumb to not combine like something that requires a lot of training and ceremony and ritual and stuff like that with the traditional ranking up in the chain of command. Um, but at the same time, if, you know, the whole clan structure was based around that night training, then you could say, well, this is how you ensure that people are going to be good officers is through this kind of filtering testing system. Um, so there's also some benefits there, but it would rely on the night order is continuously maintaining a level of rigorous training and testing and everything like that that is suited to actually um, determining who is going to be a candidate for promotion. So it's definitely a lot of like concepts to toy with that I won't get uh, too much further into, but that just gives you some insight into some of the stuff that we've also been discussing, you know, in the all thing, me with other officers and voice and stuff like that, in addition to me just kind of brainstorming stuff too. Um, overall, I'm excited by the idea of it, but there's definitely... Um, a lot of stuff to work through on that and um, again we're still sticking with the current system for uh, some time um, we've still had a relative level of upheaval in terms of warbands being created and being uh, shifted around and stuff like that so uh, for the time being we're kind of sticking to our current road and seeing how things uh, play out um yeah, but basically, uh, to summarize, there's those three things I needed all the warbands to do. In addition to, of course, we're approaching the end of the month, so reviews, reports need to get done. I've got one to write myself pretty soon here. So, um, yeah, we'll be looking to get into all that. And uh, in the meantime, we uh, will have a Court of the High King here in uh, just a little left over 10 minutes. And um, I may hold an additional one. Um, We'll see. I'll try to announce that sometime in advance, but um, for the time being, the plan is just the one, yeah, tonight. So, uh, yeah, I'll say everybody for that. Otherwise, um, we will have a, uh, let's see, looking at the schedule here, just a second. I think we may have to shift next week's... Uh, Fireside. Yeah. Yep. So I think what we'll most likely do is we will have Fireside on April 1st uh, of next week um, rather than the standard Thursday time slot. So um, I'll try to get the April calendar out maybe pretty soon here. Um, we'll see. But um, yeah, we'll plan on the standard 5 p.m. Uh, Pacific time slot, but Wednesday, April 1st for the next Fireside. And um, same deal for the Court of the High King. We'll have uh, just after that at the 5.30 p.m. time slot as well on that Wednesday rather than uh, Thursday. But uh, the week after that should be back to the normal time slot. So, uh, yeah, and then, of course, Court of the High King uh, today too. So we'll see everybody for one or all of those.